leadership qualities. What does that really mean? And who has it? Do we have leaders anymore or are people just followers? That's today's topic. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Colleen. My name is Colleen Hammond. I'm a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel turned executive image consultant, coach, and business mentor. In 30 days or less, I take the guessing out of dressing and out of business and teach women how to look their best every single solitary day of their life. So what we're talking about today is leadership qualities. What are the qualities of a leader? Why do some people want to, uh, you know, just inspire that confidence that we want to put them as a leader. Part of it is temperament. Part of it is skills that can be learned. And as we are raising our children and sending them out into the world, these are some of the qualities that I have just kind of distilled and talked to different leaders and, and found out what are the, are the qualities of a leader. And number one, is people who are true to their passion and their God-given mission. I, th I firmly believe that every single solitary person on the planet is born with a mission. And once you kind of determine and decide and find out, this is what I'm here to do. This is what I want to do. If I had you know, a few months to live. These are the things that I would want to share with other people, my family, my children, my friends, that I would like to, to carry on to a new generation. This is what I feel as, as my passion. So when people discover what their vision of life is, then there's something about that that's very inspiring to other people that, that attracts other people. So when you strive to learn what your God-given mission is, and once you have that mission and develop a vision, even though it's unpopular, maybe it's not the most popular vision on the planet, right? Or the most popular idea, but there's something about a person who's passionate about what they believe and they stay true to that conviction. Nothing worse than somebody's lukewarm and wishy-washy. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about the lukewarm and how God wants to spew and vomit them from his mouth, right? So when, and, and people are like that too. It's like when people are wishy-washy, it's like, ew. So discover your passion, discover your, your um, vision, and sticking to that, even though it's unpopular. But you also have to navigate between that, and if you're running a business and you're you're leading other people, is listening. So sure, you have your own mission and you're striving for that, but also being attuned, sharply attuned to what other people are saying, what other people, their input, um, and being a able to navigate between those two is a leadership quality. Number two, speaking of, is communication. Learning to communicate well. Part of that has to be knowing the temperaments. You can't just be a natural born communicator. There really is no such thing. There are people that may be because of their temperament are a little bit better with people, but that doesn't mean they've mastered communication. Knowing someone's temperament, knowing what's important to them, how they listen, the words that mean something to them, how to communicate to them on their level, instead of expecting people to communicate on your level. I always equate that to a child who buys his mother a baseball mitt for Mother's Day because that's what he would like. Just because that's what you would like doesn't mean it's what somebody else would like. So learning the temperaments and learning to communicate well and learning to be able to speak in other people's styles so that you can get across your idea and learning how to motivate other people. So number two is learning how to communicate well. Number three, making yourself better on a daily basis. A daily basis. You should never stop learning. You're, you'll never use the full capacity of your brain. There's always something out there new that you can learn. You know, they've got the new King Arthur movie that was out. I went and took a King Arthur course. Actually, I had taken it last year. I just refreshed it <laughs> and relearned things about King Arthur. Um, so you'll never know it all. And even things that you've learned before, you can go back and relearn those things over again. 
Uh, yeah, you go ahead and write them down, Victoria, but you, you do have notes for today. If you want to, to have access to today's notes and you're watching live, comment me in the comment section below to have access to those notes and then check your Facebook Messenger. And if you're watching on YouTube or my blog, send me a message. There is a button here locally that you can click to send me a Facebook message and ask for a copy of those notes. So never stop lear learning. Go to conferences. You can find things online. Uh, take the temperaments class. And the link to the temperaments class is in the notes. It's bit.ly forward slash four, the number four temp class. Um, learn emotional intelligence. And that's super important, important for your children. Absolutely vital for the children. That price is going up really soon, by the way. bit.ly forward slash EQ series. Learn a new language. The blessed place I've found to learn a new language online and it's free is Duolingo. The link for that's in the notes as well. And the thing about it, when you improve yourself, it's like it sends out ripples. It makes other people better too. Because not only can you share ideas that you have learned with them, it inspires other people to improve themselves. So never, ever, ever stop learning because when you make yourself better, you also make other people better. It's a win-win situation. It's never a bad thing. Education and learning is never wrong. It's never bad. It's never going to hurt you. So always, every day, learn something new. Number four, be humble. Humility is attractive. No one likes a braggart. No one likes a braggart. The ability to admit your mistakes. Yeah, I have a, I have a, a topic coming up next week, super powerful. Um, but one of the things to talk about is why people with high IQ don't succeed. Why people with high emotional intelligence succeed, but people with high IQ don't. I detail all the reasons people with high IQ do not succeed. That's next week. Anyway, so being humble. Nobody likes a braggart. Admit your mistakes. Give credit where credit is due. You know, as a leader, you're the one that sets the pace. You're the one that, you know, and nothing worse. I was in a situation where I had given somebody an idea and it was somebody I really respected. And they turned around within 15 minutes, gave that idea to their team and took credit for themselves. And I was standing right there. I went, whoa, didn't I just tell you that? Oh, well, it was something I was thinking about anyway. Doesn't matter, give credit where credit is due. Even if they had said, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while, but Colleen made a really good point. And it inspired me to let's implement this. So thank you, Colleen, for that. So give credit where credit's due. It isn't about you. That's the important thing for a leader to remember. This isn't about, this isn't about me. It's about the idea, it's about the vision, it's about our passion. Let's work on this together. Remember, a boss says go, a leader says let's go, right? So be humble, give credit where credit is due. Something very attractive about vulnerability and humility. Again, that goes back to reading Brene Brown. President Reagan said there's no amount, there's no limit rather to the amount of good you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. So give credit where credit is due. Be boldly humble. Be boldly humble. Humility has charisma. Arrogance is repulsive. So be humble and give credit where credit is due is number five. Number six, do what you do well and then hire the rest done. Find people to build your team with that are good doing things that you're not good at. You don't have to be good at everything. You're not going to be good at everything. It's just impossible, right? Good leaders will find great people to build their team with. The, the really good leaders, again, leadership is about finding people that can do what you can't do. Not hiring people who you like. You may hire somebody to do something for you that they're excellent at and you don't necessarily want to hang out with them after work. That's okay. If they can do what they do well and they see the vision and you can inspire and communicate that vision to them, that's what's important. And that kind of goes back to humility again. Uh, find other people's strengths and also help them grow in those strengths. Too often, like, like for example, when I was hiring a, um, a personal assistant, a virtual assistant, personal assistant, same kind of thing, but she's virtual, so she's also my personal assistant. But uh, I was looking at the, the place I hired her through is they have temperament tests. Well, the challenge is like, ooh, she's just like me. We'll get along great, right? 
but I'm hiring her to do something I'm not good at, which means we're going to have different temperaments. So because I know the temperament so well, I was able to look at people's resumes, but then I looked at their temperament test scores and I was like, well, I don't care what it says on the resume. I can tell by their temperament what they're naturally going to be good at. So when I hired Jennifer, score, she's amazing. But I know how to communicate with her because I know what her temperament is. I can speak to her in her language so that she understands and she shares the passion and the same vision that I do. So because we're so different, she can do the things I'm not good at. So learn to hire people and work with people on your team. I don't care if you're working on a church project. If you know someone's temperament, you know what they're going to be good at. You can assign them to do that particular job. So, and it makes the entire team better. If you can improve the entire team, you're just going to get to your vision and your passion that much quicker. Number seven, always give back. Find a charity that you're passionate about and take a portion of whatever you're earning, your 10% and learn to give that back. And if you can get your entire team involved with that, I remember different companies that I worked for, sometimes it's a requirement, uh, but some companies that I worked for in the past where they just had a different, a charity that they were passionate about that we would work for on the side, whether that's Habitat for Humanity or if you have your own charity or whatever, but always giving back to the community, being grateful for what you have. And, and as a Christian, of course, I understand that you can't out give God. Right, So when you give back your 10% or, or whatever you've decided that you're going to do, 20% or whatever, when you give that back to the community or to another charity of your choice, I have found it comes back a hundredfold anyway. So what are those seven again? Number one, stay true to your vision. Find out what your passion is, know what your vision is. Even though it's unpopular, stick with your virtues your values, your beliefs, and your non-negotiables. Number two, learn to communicate well. Learn the temperaments, L develop your emotional intelligence, and speak in other people's styles. Number three, make yourself better every day. Never stop learning. It makes you better and it makes everybody around you better. Take the temperaments class, take the emotional intelligence class, learn a new language, uh, learn a new uh, craft or a hobby. Number four, humility. Humility has charisma. Arrogance is repulsive. So be boldly humble and give credit where credit is due. Make sure your credit, in, in, you know, you're encouraging other people by acknowledging their contributions. Uh, number five, oh, that's number five is be humble. Number six, do what you do well. Focus on what you do well. Don't try to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Find what you do well, do that well, and then hire other people to do their other things or assign other people to do the other things. But again, you need to know their temperament and you have to be emotionally intelligent enough to find out, you know, to, to know what to look for in those other people. And number seven, always give back. It feels good to give. And if you've given, you understand that. And sometimes it's not about the money. Sometimes it's about giving your time. It doesn't have to necessarily be, be the money, but it can be your time too, because time is a treasure. So always giving back. Find a charity that you're passionate about and devote your time, your energies, your monies, your spirit, whatever, to that passion and to that extra um, charity. Those are the signs of a good leader. And remember, a leader, or a boss rather, says go, and a leader says, let's go. So I hope these tips were helpful to you. If you found them encouraging or helpful in any way, please feel free to share this video. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't already. Make sure you click that bell so you know when I uh, upload anything uh, else. And make sure um, you also have to click the little button that says, yeah, to notify me. So thanks for joining us. Oh, good, it recorded. <laughs> Always glad when it does that. And if you're watching the recording, you can watch us live Monday through Friday on facebook.com forward slash Colleen M. Hammond. The link to that page is also in the show notes. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.